Coming up next on the Wet Fly Swing podcast. I remember one day I came home and there was a, he wrote me a card and a handwritten card and talked to me about my films and River Horse, this is important work. Good job, keep it up. And I thought, wow, that was a really beautiful card to receive. And I kept it. I was like, I thought it was cool. That was River Horse with some love from Patagonia's founder, Guitar Heroes, Gearock, Texas, and the Poetry Read today on The Swing. Welcome to the Wet Fly Swing Fly Fishing Show, where you discover tips, tricks, and tools from the leading names in fly fishing today. Today's episode is presented by Jackson Hole Fly Company. Jackson Hole Fly Company is a new kind of online fly shop. They design and manufacture their own high-quality fly rods, reels, gear, and over 1,000 fly patterns. Right now, you can get 25% off your first order. Go to jhflyco.com slash swing to get started today. That's jhflyco.com slash swing. Hey, how you doing today? Thank you for stopping by the show. Give a follow right now at Wet Fly Swing on Instagram. You can give a follow to support this podcast and get a chance to ask an upcoming guest a question on Instagram. Go give it a shot right now. If you're not following us on Instagram, Wet Fly Swing, and uh, and we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be giving out some swag as well along the way. Today's episode is sponsored by Daiichi Fishing Hooks, a leader in the fly fishing industry and still the world's sharpest hook. Tempered with carbon-rich steel, Daiichi offers superior penetration without compromising the hook's structural integrity. You can head over right now to wetflyswing.com slash Daiichi and check out what they have going and check out these killer hooks. That's Daiichi, D-A-I-I-C-H-I. River Horse Nakadate is back on the podcast to take us into his passion-filled life of writing, fly fishing, poetry, and love. We discover how he came to know so many famous musicians along the way, especially as of late. We find out what his mom has meant to him. We talk about uh, we talk about moms in general and women and just the influence here. So this is a really cool conversation. Plus, like I said, we get a live poetry read. Big night today. Big day for uh, for River Horse and for us. Here we go. On Instagram, River Horse underscore Nakadate. How you doing, River Horse? Oh, man. Best day ever. So good to hear from you. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's always good to chat with you. Um, you know, one of our good friends, you know, he's become even a better friend of mine, uh, uh, Jeff Liske. I know I've seen some photos of you out there. And so it's always good. I, I think the more I'm into this, the more I connect with cool people. And and uh, and you're and you're one of those guys that has some good stuff going. So we're going to talk conservation. We're going to talk Patagonia. Everything you have going. Um, I don't have the episode in front of me, but it's been a little while since you've been on. What's been happening since that last episode we had you on here? Just kind of the same old, you know. Always projects on the table and just running wild around here when I'm home. Just doing the bass and the salt marshes, but. Some cool, still some cool film projects happening out there with Tony Check. He wrote me into a film in Alaska where they got this, rented this little ship and got these two surf stars that are a married couple and uh, had this crazy adventure and Tony's had me write the film and do the voiceover and man, that's a, the footage is unbelievable. There was this massive storm that hit on the Aleutian Islands, so that's been cool. Um, it's always a learning process, and there's other brands involved. And those guys all have, maybe we should have a female narrator. And I'm like, oh, well, that's fine, too. <laughs> They're figuring, <laughs> figuring out all those pieces. But And then Tony and I are still working on that Patagonia Lapland film with the Sami tribe up north of Sweden. And that's just a gorgeous film. But when you sit there with a, a piece of work like that, there's a thousand choices to make. And all that has to take somebody on a special place within eight, ten minutes. So coming along, it's been a long process in our Patagonia film team. It's even to, you know, sometimes it takes months just to get the next meeting going on the edits and stuff. But gosh, I just, I love that work and being up there and those reindeer and fish. And what else? I did a project out of New York that's finally hitting, I think, where I did, wrote some words and, voiceover and that's benefiting united nations charities so man what an honor to 
Wow. Yeah. You're, you're uh, so you're busy doing and, and you're getting some fishing in there too along the way, right? What's, how do you, when you look ahead, I think I've, I've asked you this before, but you have all this going, are you just, is Patagonia the thing that you're kind of working with them that's taking up a bulk of your time or do you have time to do a lot of other, uh, these movies and things like that? My mother, Patagonia films, the surf films, not, but, um, no, I mean, what an incredible supportive team and what a, what a mega horn for any projects we're doing for the earth, just with what Yvonne sold the company or basically gave it away to the earth. So that our team's doubled down on being able to do these projects to protect fish and rivers and the earth and ecosystems. So no, it's, I would say it takes the bulk of it, but at the same time they do, you know, whatever I propose, those guys are fired up and just get behind it and say, what do you need? So, Oh, wow. That's it. So pretty much you come up with an idea and say, hey, I've got this idea. What do you think? And they're like, let's do it. Mm-hmm. We had just done or I did a multicultural film tour through Texas. And we hit a couple of places, Austin and San Antonio with Jamaica Dawes. Um, and that was incredible. And they got behind that and got us on the road and gave us places to sleep and fed us while we were cruising and meeting communities and showing the film and talk. So. It's just, there's always work to do, especially these days. Yeah, exactly. Let's dig into a little bit on that Patagonia. So you have a Patagonia film. So let's talk about what you've produced and then maybe what's upcoming so far. Remind us again, what are the, what's the name there you have going? Well, originally they had supported with Flyfish Journal, um, that film called A Love and Water, which followed me just through my home places, favorite little secret places in Texas. And you can hop on you know, YouTube and find that. And then we did that film on the Boundary Waters, that canoe journey up there called A Northern Light. And since then, they've been able to get a 20-year ban on that mining. But there's a guy, a Minnesota representative, his last name's Stauber, and he just proposed to take away the 20-year ban and let it rip on mines in there. So kind of just, I feel like that work will be a lifetime of just fighting to keep out of our wilderness. And there's always somebody that wants to do that. They're also trying to do a lifetime ban. But, you know, what I didn't know and what I've learned is that any sitting president can erase all that any time. So, yeah, that's the challenge, right, is that you've got this. Everybody puts all this hard work in, whether it's Bristol Bay or any of these other places. But at the end of the day, it's not a hundred percent. I guess, how do you, yeah, to get to hundred percent, I guess it needs to be protected like as a national park or some other level, right? And I guess that's not what the boundary waters received. It was more, how did that look? Um, same, yeah, like you said, just a 20 year ban and on any of those leases, they were illegal leases in the first place. But the bottom line is it's a one of a kind, incredible, incredible wilderness. And I'm not anti mining. Like I got cell phone. You know, we need copper and all those things, and we need we need those materials just to even do green solar stuff. Uh, so we still got to work together. I'm not anti mining, but just don't put it in you know one of the greatest public wildernesses in the world. When especially when the guy has a track record of mining disasters that have done really harmful things, just harrowing things in indigenous villages. So good grief, right? Yeah, yeah, that's some ugly stuff. And the uh, and remind us again, who is the group or one group that's leading the charge that people could check out uh, on the Boundary Waters? Uh, let's save the Boundary Waters. Just hop online and find those guys and get on their little email list. And But more so, I would just encourage any listeners to get up to the Boundary Waters. And then at that point, they'll realize, you know, how amazing it is. There's spots up there for cool little lodges and day trips and canoe rentals for 30 bucks a day. And, you have the time of your life. Right. Let alone the fishing's ridiculous. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous up there. Yeah. Yeah. The Boundary Waters is definitely one of those places I need to get up to. We're, we've we been heading out. You all, you probably fish. We probably fish some of the same waters because we're heading back with Jeff to fish Ohio, Lake Erie and stuff. But I haven't been up kind of up north of there. What is that like if you were to, you know, in Ohio and you're going to head up to the Boundary Waters? Is that a little bit of a, a journey up there? No, it's 10 hours if you're taking the truck. I'm actually leaving in a few hours. I got a couple canoes and two beach cruiser bikes and all my gear, and I'm going to drive up through there Saturday morning. Oh, wow. There you go. <laughs> and I have two canoes. We're going to get some work done on those at the Merrimack factory, and then I'm working my way over 
through Indiana to Ohio to my girlfriend who's up there. Oh, wow. Yeah, she's she lives there, but she's been here with me most of the year, but back home to her home and see her mom and dad. So I'm working my way towards Jeff, actually. Oh, there you go. You're working your way down. And I'll be based out of there in and out for a couple months just on the road doing that stuff. So I'm I'm packing up. Wow, this is it. So you got a road trip. And when you pack up, how does that look? I know, I think you had like a tundra or something like that. Do you have the full camper set up or is this like throw out the tent on the ground as you go? Yeah, I got the tent, but I like sleeping in the back of the truck. You know, even under the canoes, if it's raining, I'm kind of covered. But nope, I got it down. It's yeah. a pretty simple <laughs> process. But I'm one of those guys who, if I take off on the trip, like I'll roll 16, 18 hours. So. Oh, you just drive straight for 16 hours? Mm-hmm. Oh man, that's amazing! What's your secret there? Uh, good music. <laughs> <laughs> good. So is it? So it's music over podcasts. You, are you? I can't remember. You, do you listen to podcasts all the way? I do all of that stuff. I listen to it. And a lot of time. I just like windows down. Just you know, rolling through Oklahoma and Kansas oh. and fun, beautiful. You got the good life here. Yeah, you find some farmers market and get some local fruit. Just keep going, but definitely. Definitely lots of chai tea and, and uh, coffee on the Espresso City. <laughs> there you go. So you do have some coffee. And, and so the music, I want to hit on that because we've been doing this. It's been awesome, like on social and stuff, how you can just get any music, right? Any song now. You can just put on a story or whatever. But give us something to throw when we do our post here. What would be a, a song or a band or something we can look up and, and throw out there for you? Oh, man, I got something going on right now. So this buddy of mine, I don't think I ever told you, but. You know, I'm a guitarist, and oh yeah, had done a lot of music. And a friend of mine that ran this magazine called the Tone Quest Report for 20 years, um, he passed away a year ago. And at the funeral, his wife asked me if I'd take over the magazine. I said, no, no thanks. I got so much going on. And then I thought about it. And I thought, well, I love that stuff. It's so great to talk to all these people and musicians and artists and okay, I'll do it for three months. I'll get it through the summer. And now it's already been over a year and I've been writing the, the whole magazine. And on our board is all these rock stars like ZZ Top, Peter Frampton, Billy Gibbons of ZZ and Fogarty. And oh, man. Even the Twisted Sister guitarist yep. has been work, writing me stories for the magazine. Oh, just, wow. So they're writing stories. So these guys, are you getting these people to actually be like, um, yeah, kind of like whatever journalists for you? Yeah, they're on the board and I help them. We added it, but they got so many stories. But there's a guy, a friend of mine named Daryl Scott, and he's just leaving this morning, but he's been here the last three days with his wife and dog. He's out of Tennessee, and that guy, he had a show last night, and I would check out his song, Never Leave Harlan Alive. So it's Daryl Scott, and he was Robert Plant of Led Zeppelin's. Yeah, I was going to say, Daryl Scott sounds familiar. Yeah, so Band of Joy, that Robert Plant band that toured all over, he was the Daryl was the band leader for a Zach Brown band and, you know, like Merle Haggard, Brad Paisley and Dixie Chicks. All these people have had hits with Daryl's music. So check him out. We've there been hanging go. out for like three days and playing guitars and love it. Unbelievable friends. So that is so cool. So we got some music. So Daryl Scott and I will definitely look that up and never leave Harlan alive. Um, yeah. L- listen to his cover. I think, you know, and, I like his cover. I think Paisley and shoot like Bonnie Raitt, all kinds of people have covered wow. that song. God, that's amazing. He had a hit with that song, A Great Day to Be Alive. Uh huh. And then I think the Dixie Chicks had a number one song with his, one of his called A Long Road Home. Yeah. But man, he's just, you know, they've been hanging out of the house with their, their dog and just cranking guitars for days and going out for Mexican food. And even me, like, that's my friend, but. When he's in the house just wailing and I'm in the kitchen making coffee, I'm just like, holy shit, that guy can play. <laughs> that is so cool. Yeah, I, I was over at my brother's place, uh, you know, just yesterday. And he is, you know, he's not a, he's a way better guitar player than me, right? I, I don't even really play, but he was just picking some old, uh, you know, Willie Nelson. And, you know, it's just like, God, the guitar is such a great instrument. You know what I mean? Like, even if you're not like a superstar like what is it what do you think about the guitar for you because you're kind of at that level higher level what you know why is it that i mean i guess anybody can pick it up but what is it why is the guitar so special is that what it is everybody's kind of knows about it well it's just the same thing as 
you know, you're the beat of your heart. That's what music's in that same zone and the emotions of it. And there's the way that the human brain responds to music is really fascinating, how it immediately just fires into your body and your emotions and affects you and your energy. And I think that'll, that's just something how we're wired, how we're designed. But oh man, I couldn't, couldn't imagine life without guitars laying around and cranking them. And that's, it's such a, it can be just you, whether you're a great player or not, you've got that instrument at the end of the day or you find yourself somewhere and it's all yours, like to, to paint, paint those sonic tapestries. So, or you, you know, that's a pretty cool feeling when you get to play with other people or hop on a stage or record some music. So that right. film, Love and Water, that followed me through Texas. One of the nights, Copy and Liam were hanging out and I just happened to be in the living room alone in the dark, just playing one of my old acoustics. And Liam threw a mic out there. I didn't see him. So they used a lot of that, just random music for the film. Oh, right. Even that, the intro to that film is from that stuff. So it's funny how little things pop up. But Yeah, yeah Love and Water. Yeah, we'll definitely put as many links as we can in the show notes so we can take a look at that. You mentioned the magazine. What was this, uh, the guitar or the music magazine that you're kind of uh, editing now? What, what's the name of it again? Okay, so that's the Tone Quest Report, and it's ToneQuestReport.com. And if you get on that website, like, right off, like, all these amazing musicians talk about the magazine, and you'll see some bios, and you can download a free issue or two, so. Oh, wow. All right. Yeah, Tone, yeah, the Tone Quest Report. There it is. Tone Quest Report. Perfect. Yeah, it's all one word, but, man, I mean, how cool is it when you're working away and you get an email from credence clearwater revival or Jeez. Like, how's it going yeah, good <laughs> <laughs> so that's the cool thing about it because you got all these levels of things right you got you know we're kind of in the fly fishing space you know and i'm always interviewing you know all these amazing right and i'm just looking at the website now yeah billy gibbons and all these crazy people are scrolling by jackson jackson brown it's so cool been working with him lately and oh no his, kidding mm-hmm Man, amazing. Yeah, Jackson Brown. What is, what is, I'm trying to think now, what Jackson Brown's done so much. He's probably done so much I don't even know about, but what is, what was some of his big stuff? I'm trying to think now. I mean, I mean, running on empty this oh, yeah. time. Um, it's just still cranking that. And that was David Liz Lindley who played that lap steel slide, soaring slide solo on there. And he just passed away this year. So, oh, wow. man, that guy, that guy was amazing. There you go. Wow. So you're, so you got your time now. I mean, you've already playing, but now you've got this other project. Um, do you find yourself kind of maxed out with what you can do because you've got kind of both conservation now, the editing of this magazine going? Yeah, and I, I have that little writing program for public high school kids that I founded, so I'm teaching all the time. And, oh, wow. You know, I've had, I've had a girl, a woman that I love for years in my life, and, like, first and foremost, that's my world, hanging out with her. So, you know, we find balance there. and. Sometimes I've like, you know, I'd sit down with her. I'm like, wow, I'm trying to juggle all this stuff, and it's a lot. And I just want to hang out with you, go back riding and fishing, and be out for supper. And you know, but I guess this is our, it's not a dress for her. So I guess this is our one and only life. And so I'm I'm trying to find that balance, but at the same time, you know, I never dreamed all this. What an honor to do these kinds of things. My other big news is I've been writing all the stories there's a new one in Flyfish journal that just came out last week called heartland drifting and that's like a 12 page feature in there and that's with uh hansi johnson and we went on this wild southeast minnesota trout adventure in that driftless area really fun story oh nice you can check that out right on and I'm doing i just finished a book proposal and for the book and i've only turned it into one publishing company and they're fired up, but you know, it has to go through all kinds of chains. So who knows? It could be a bust or could be maybe a dream come true there. But I've saved a bunch of my favorite craziest stories for a book of fly fishing essays and adventures. So that's been There you go. Just getting to that point, you know, has been such a road for all these years. So Wow. And is this book I, I can't remember it now, is this gonna be your first uh book of essays or have you done some stuff in the past? This will be the first book and probably the only one. I mean, I've done like 28 pieces for Flyfish Journal. I've got, I got a lot of collected work among all the other magazines. And I just wanted, I've always wanted to leave something here, 
leave something behind and hopefully like you've read my stuff hopefully there's some oh yeah candid heartfelt content that anybody who ever has things like that in their life that i've come across that they can relate to it and it, and it helps them let alone a lot of those stories are just playing heck raising fun <laughs> How would you describe, for somebody that hasn't read uh, some of the stories in the Fly Fish Journal, how would you describe your writing to somebody who hasn't read it before? I think there's a sense of reverence for the deep beauty of wilderness and earth, and at the same time, there's kind of a buckwild rowdiness, just appreciating how fun it is to go fishing. And, you know, when you do that, there's always going to be some things that don't work out. You know, all those fishing, all those fishing stories aren't always about fishing nor should they be. Right, exactly. That's And I, as you're talking here, I'm thinking, of course, you know, John Girock, who we had on oh, you know, recently, and, uh, and I was picking his brain about a book that he had coming out and some older stuff. And, you know, it's interesting. I mean, I, this is kind of a hard, and obviously nobody wants to be compared to John Girock, but, you know, when you look at his writing, and his is so unique because I mean, he's just telling a story, right? It's like him just out there, but somehow he's got this thing going. Like, how would you, if I had to say like, you know, John Girock, I'm sure you've read some of his stuff. You know, what what are your thoughts there? And do you think there's any similarities between you and what he does? Well, John's a really concise wordsmith and he doesn't waste space. And that's a style of mine. Like I'm more of a prose poetry, um, more hard on a sleeve, more willing to go deep. Girac kind of just lets you read between the lines. I've actually got all of his books. Oh, wow. And I've read every word, and I've loved John and what he's done. He's an OG. Um, he, uh, you know, that last book was good, but you could tell that he was just the home with Corona and oh, during right. the pandemic, and you could tell that he was local, and that was interesting to have him more central. And he wrote about topics like waiters or waiting and, but I would say that, um, yeah, that guy's the OG. In fact, I got a friend of mine that builds guitars and fly fishes, this guy, Larry Pagriba. And when Girock first moved to Colorado, Larry was the guy who showed him around. And he's in a lot of those stories of Girock. There's one where Larry's on a spring creek wearing some funny outfit and catching trout. You know, picky trout with a giant squid pattern, a saltwater squid pattern, and nobody else is catching anything. And then there's a there's one where they, I think it's called the poacher or something. You'll have to find it. But there's a fun gear at connection. I've talked to him two or three times, and we've tried to to hang out. And I've come and rolled through Colorado, and we just missed each other. So, but that's the guy. I think our writings, I think mine's just a little different, really. Hardcore, a loving wilderness slant. And I've, you know, I've got a lot of poetry in mine. And um, then there's a lot of stuff where the hits the fan and it's just hilarious. And what are you going to do? So, right, right. Just let it loose. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, I'm trying to help people appreciate just the beauty of wilderness and care for it and, and have fun along the way. Yeah, that's obviously the most important thing. Um, so for Girock, I'm hoping to get him on and do a, a, a little more of a series on, you know, Girock's books and stuff. So if we had to pick one book to dig into on a next episode with John, which one would you want to hear more about, like the inside scoop on? Well, I'd go back to Trout Bomb because he coined that phrase and that was an, uh, the early book and that was the one that put everything on the map. And I feel like other than McGuane and other writers, like, I feel like that's when John just said, hey, I'm here. And it was a huge statement and a killer book and it's timeless so yeah yeah that's it yeah drop bomb amazing yeah i would personally i would love to see there's some cool movements with women fly fishing groups and i would just wonder where are more female riders because they're as they should be they're becoming a great part of this and it's such a guy guy thing and it's just and you know and there's they're incredible women out there like my gal and Lots of stories to tell, and whether they maybe they don't even want to tell them, they're just out enjoying it. But I would like to see more of that instead of this, just the same guys doing all these pieces. I think Fly Fish Journal is really celebrating and supporting female writers finally. So they are. God, that's great. I know that that is one of those things, and we don't do a good enough job either. You know, I don't think anybody because I look at our listenership, right, and it's definitely majority male 
you know, dominated. And, uh, but I think, yeah, like Jen Ripple, I mean, we've had her on a couple of times and some of the people out there that are doing good things. Um, yeah. Who would be, who would be some of those people? I mean, who, are there any, like, who would be a couple of names maybe that, you know, people might not know about that are either writing or doing some good stuff in a similar space? That they wouldn't know about. I think Erin Block out of Colorado. I think she's a fly fishing librarian and her husband, Jay. She's a great writer. And I would just like, so there's a book coming out in October by Pete Comiskey. He was the New York Times outdoor editor for 30 years. And he, um, he called and there's over 70 people in the fly fishing world going to be in this book coming out, each having a short essay like McGuane. And, but he's also been into big time chefs and artists and, so he's got this collection, and it's called My Catch of a Lifetime. And I think Hillary Hutchison and Rachel, they're going to have pieces in there that, that I've seen in, in the emails from the publishing company. So that'll be, that'll be cool. And, you know, those people, Hillary and Rachel, walk the walk. They're just good grief, you know, great guides and stewards and people. So there's, I, would, I would encourage you to, to dig deep and, have all these just a nice range of culture and people on this awesome show oh man i know i need to i talk a lot about in fact this all started for me because when we started i mean we've been doing you know now it's been six years of every week right in multiple weeks so we've been going strong but a few years ago my uh, father-in-law early on or whenever it was you know he's like hey where's all the females on your podcast and he's actually passed away since then he just passed away this this year and, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, God, it's always on my mind and I struggle, I think, still. Like, how do I get to that 50-50 thing? You know, I know that's just a, a name of something, right? But but how do we do a better job? And I guess you just have to put the effort in, right? You, you literally need to just make an effort every day to think, okay, you know, how am I doing this? How am I getting more female, you know, artists, whatever on? Yeah, you just make a conscious effort. But I will live this life having had an incredible mom that raised me and the woman I've been with for years that I love, like just always marveling at how amazing she is, just thinking, just feeling like they're the better species for sure right. than this guy. Like, I was like, wow, these women are amazing. Yeah. Well, last time we talked, I think maybe, if I feel like maybe you didn't have a girlfriend, maybe you did. What What's the, it feels like now you've got something serious going. Is that is that the case here? It's been years, over four years, but I probably just keep that stuff like close to my heart and Gotcha. Protective of that. And even, you know, with social media and stuff, like I probably should have. I mean, sure, it's fine, but anybody, I just don't put that stuff out there. I like to have that to us. Yeah, me too. Me too. That's the thing. I think uh, that is a struggle of mine too. It's like, I've got a, I've got some amazing women in my life as well, including uh, two uh, daughters. You know, I've got Megan who, you know, she's amazing and she's got this whole other world of stuff that I'm not even, we'll never even totally understand, right? As far as naturopathic and medicine and stuff. But, and then my kids, 9 and 11, you know, they're just these fire, fire, just powerhouses. (laughs) And at times I have, you know what I mean? At times I'm like, wow, how do I control that? I don't even control is not the right word, right? But how do I, you know, this energy there is just this amazing power. And, And I feel like I grew up with three brothers, Right. And so I'm in this other world of women. And I, so I know exactly what you're talking about. I mean, it's, it is amazing and powerful. And it, sometimes I struggle because I'm like, wow, I, I wonder if I'm doing a good job. You know what I mean? Do you ever find yourself thinking about that as well? No, that's a great point. And you're so lucky to have those gals. And no, I just more just look and say, wow, that's, that's woman power and just see how awesome that light is. And I think my mom gave me that gift of, never being afraid to communicate lovingly and honesty with the guys in my life and the women just saying, man, I love you. And I never hold back with any of that stuff, whether it's in person or writing. And my friends all know that. And I think that's a gift for my mom because I just feel women will communicate. So we could all learn from that. That's it. On a case by case <laughs> basis with some of us guys. Right. <laughs> that's right. No, it, it comes off. I think that's what one of the things people love, you know, love about you. And I think that, yeah, a lot of guys, I struggle with that myself. You know, it's just a struggle. You, you know what I mean? Just saying, I love you, right? That's like one of those things. It's like, it shouldn't be that hard. 
Um, but no, this is great. I think River Horse, we're, we've gone down a track, which I love because I think it's all about trying to, you know, go deep and, and kind of get people thinking differently. I mean, do you find, let's take it back to the conversation of uh, the conservation a little bit. You know, what is the biggest struggle there in getting people, um, you know, to kind of buy in, to uh, engage? Because it seems like it almost gets political, right, with this conservation stuff. What's your thoughts on where we're at with all this and where we're headed? Is this, op- can we be optimistic about things or what's your take? Yeah, you have to be. I mean, otherwise you just roll over and, and give in, and that's not what we're here for. Um, I think there's so much doom and gloom, and, you know, even the broadcast and media and stuff. The steelhead are dying. This river's polluted. This is our fish farming, and it's it hurts. Like, you take so many shots, and I think that's so disheartening that I would like, just with my stories and books, that's why I do so many fun hog stories to, Temper that. All right, here's some fun. Oh, and here's a story about how we can do a better job of maybe take care of something instead of saying the sky is falling. That just hurts so much, and there's so much of that. I mean, I subscribed to New York Times for years, and I just couldn't even look at it anymore. I'm just like, I can't even. Put this. I know this stuff, but I can't have this in my life, in my brain. So I just shut that stuff out. But I would, I would just ask that. Uh, we know that none of us have all the answers and there's two sides to every story. And my goal for us as humans would be to find common ground and just like what I think is the best for me doesn't mean it's best for others. So to try to just everybody meet in the middle. And I think that would be a huge leap forward for humankind. Yep. I agree. I, I think that's, that feels like, you know, I know Texas is, you have strong roots in the Texas it feels like Texas is is one of those places that has a lot of diversity and uh and maybe has a lot of that where people can see both sides do you find what what is about i probably asked you this before too but like texas you know like you've traveled all around the country what why is texas is that kind of what it is it's just this diversity of cultures and that makes it special for sure and i can tell you this like texans love texans there's a lot of pride here (laughs) it's weird that how much texans are proud of themselves and that's funny and a lot of the cliches about Texans are true, and that's that's kind of embarrassing too. And women's rights and gun rights and all those hot button topics that we don't even need to. We all know about all that, and it's just like, wow, oh my gosh! And here we are. I'm in the middle of it, and I just go, like, oh boy. But that's everywhere now. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and the don't mess with Texas is an interesting story too, as well. I, somebody told me about how that came to be. You know, back in the 70s or whatever, where it was a campaign, I think the the state put on where they're trying to clean up the roads. Yeah. You know, they're trying, there's so much litter, right? And it was like, all right, what, what's the, what's the tagline we're going to come up with? And they tried a few and, and, you know, don't mess with Texas, right? Don't mess with Texas was the thing. And it stuck, right? And then and now it's this thing. I mean, God, is there a better tagline than for Texas than that? What, what's another good one that somebody would say for Texas? Um, I don't know. <laughs> but I think, <laughs> you know, I think there's, like that macho i think there's a machismo attached to that that's kind of lame you know they're don't mess with us it's like no right point of that campaign is to not you know throw out trash and exactly it's good and take care of our home so i don't know there's one that's common in texas where there's this cannon and these stickers and flags and it's come and take it and it's about this standoff where these another like alamo kind of thing where you know, just a few guys against like billions of people and they had a cannon and a lot of people fly that around here that come and take it. And my favorite twist on that is sometimes I see people with a sign in the yard and it shows somebody laying in the yard reading the book and it says, come and take it. And <laughs> like, right. Wow. Just somebody celebrating reading, you know, how much <laughs> trying to take my book away. I love reading. Right. I always laugh. I'm like, yeah, I feel the same. Today's episode is sponsored by Tokens Fly Shop. Tokens Fly Shop provides superior quality products at a great price. They have also a great YouTube channel that you can check out right now with uh, new fly tying tutorials each week. Tokens also has you covered if you're looking for unique in-house products. And they also support uh, many, many of the great brands out there that you know and trust. It's been fun connecting with Justin, the family, uh, over the years now. And it's it's been really cool. A great local fly shop. Tokens is also offering their fly tying box where they send out materials 
at a regular cadence where you don't even have to think of it. You just open the mailbox and there's your Togans pack. And I recently made an order through Togans and the experience is always perfect. They've got you covered if you have, ever have questions or need any help, whether that's a YouTube tutorial or connecting with them uh, personally. Since 2005, Togans has been over delivering on customer service. And it's time for you to check out uh, Togans Buzz for yourself. You can head over to wetflyswing.com slash Togans right now to check out their diverse selection of products today. You support this podcast by clicking through that link to Togans online. That's Togans, T-O-G-E-N-S. Okay, back to the show. So you have, you know, the writing, you know, obviously reading. I mean, you have all this, all the art, everything going here. I mean, what is your, when you, at the end of the day, what's the one thing if you, I know these are not easy questions, but if you had to pick, what's the one thing, if you had to pick one thing to do right now, you got guitar, you got conservation, fly fishing, you know, is it all kind of equal for you or do you, does one thing ride above the other, rise above the others? For sure. Being out in nature and, um, with, somebody I love or people I love like that's the end all for me in this life I just think it's miracle after miracle out there how incredible even the birds and water will forever it doesn't even make sense to me you know how it made. and was it Thoreau they said water is hydrogen oxygen and there's a third thing that material that we don't even understand it or don't know what it is and I've always thought yeah water is how will we ever it's in our bodies and the things we can do with it and we need it to live and it's the most precious resource out there. So so that's when you visit Ohio, you get to see Lake Erie and that's a huge success story. That whole area is incredible, all those great lakes and Lake Erie and Cleveland, freaking amazing. I know. We had such a great time in that trip last year. We did our, our Steelhead East School. You know, we're doing these programs, these travel programs now around the country. And, and, you know, we're just taking it slow. But, I mean, that thing was so great because we had these six people that came together from around the, you know, around the country. And we, Jeff was the leader, right? He just, he did, I mean, it was just this amazing thing. We all caught fish. But, you know, you know, obviously that's not what it's about. But it was just this experience. And I had never been to Ohio, right? And everybody thinks, or, you know, I thought, right, Ohio, sure, you hear about the, whatever the river, right, that, that caught on fire. Mm-hmm. People think of that. That's okay. What was it called? The Cuyahoga. Yeah, Cuyahoga. And when I was there, I was like, wow, this is like an amazing city. Cleveland, you know, right on the water. I mean, these rivers we were fishing, you know, an hour north of there. And I just felt like, God, this is like a, well, for me on the other side of the country, I just felt like, wow, this is, you know, it's not what I thought. And so I feel like, you know, that's just a great resource there, right? This, that whole part of the world. Yeah. And, you know, speaking of Jeff, like, wow, what an amazing person and human and waterman and I just feel like I'm kind of hanging with MacGyver when I get to hang. (laughs) He says the same, but we've had so many cool little adventures together, but you just know if you're in that area with that guy, you know, you could not be in better hands. I know. Do you remember how you met Jeff for the first time? Just from our team. And I gave him a that I was coming through. So you met him through Patagonia? Mm Mm-hmm. I've always knew of him, but then like, You know, the woman I love grew up in that area, so we're coming home to see family. I was like, would you possibly spend some time with me? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll spend time with you. I'll pick you up Saturday morning. (laughs) Yeah, I know. It is good. Yeah, he's definitely one of those guys where you hop in the car and instantly you're like, oh, I feel like I've, you know what I mean? I've known you forever. This is this is going to be easy. Yeah. It's really cool. And I've never caught fish like that. And I've caught all kinds of different fish, but those lake run rainbow trout that he put me on there they're amazing oh wow yeah so that was your first time getting into some of those uh yeah steelhead in there absolutely i'm some bass fishing texas i don't know (laughs) that's right (laughs) and they just brought all these bay rods and i said hey not gonna happen just i'll cast across this river with the single hander we're we're fine he's like all right network you know at the time he just laughed it's great. Yeah, he's doing, um, it's been really amazing. I feel, you know, privileged because he's doing a, a series of episodes on the podcast, which is like, the, you know, it's just the Great Lakes Dude podcast. So he's he's doing solo shows now and uh, he's doing this series of Steelhead step by step. And I'm just listening to one now that we're getting ready to publish. You know what I mean? It's like, he's just breaking down this stuff like boom, boom, boom. Here's how you do it. And people are loving it. You know what I mean? Because he's very good. He's very, um, he's a good teacher, right? That's what it comes down to. Yeah, and he endlessly devotes himself to his home communities. 
as well as that. So Jeff, will, he's that guy that'll sit there for a couple hours with two or three people. You know, he doesn't need some giant arena or some shit. And then he'll have, you know, big audiences. But he's just tireless on that stuff. He just keeps giving, giving, giving. And well, I remember one time we're hiking on this river and this, we meet some guy and Jeff's like, hey, you might want to try this and that, some local fisherman. And the guy looked a little lost and he goes, well, I'm going to use this because... I listened to this show by Jeff Lesquet, and he says that, and Jeff goes, oh, good. Yeah, well, and the guy didn't know it was Jeff, and we were laughing. <laughs> oh, nice. That's awesome. It was a cute yeah. moment, but like you're saying, like, I'm endlessly grateful yeah. to have somebody in my life that's from that area that just showed me a different place, whether it's Indiana or Ohio or uh, Minnesota, all through those lakes are really special, and I haven't seen. I bear it. Like, there's just, right. I don't know what I'm talking about. You know, there's so much out there. Yeah. Yeah. But you travel, I mean, you travel quite a bit. Like, when you get on, do you kind of have a plan for like a tour where you're going to hit some, some shops or some places? What does that look like when you look ahead as far as your traveling? I'm, I'm, if I'm traveling, I'm just fishing and I never, never go to any shops. Patagonia, we got all the gear and I just order up from Umqua or Jake and those. No, I don't really hang in flesh shops unless we're doing a film or talk or something. But I'd rather be fishing. I don't go to any of those trade shows. <laughs> right, yeah, you don't go to the trade shows either, right? No, people are like, you go on this and that. And I'd, like, well, I'd rather go fishing than talk about it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, the trade shows are an uh, interesting thing. I, I, I enjoy them for a few reasons, you know, um, definitely. But, you know, I think people, I think it's a lot, right? But um, yeah, anyway. That area is amazing, and I mean, between my gal and Jeff, they just showed me unbelievable stuff. Right, right, right. She's a great, she's a great fisherman too. And oh, she is. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, she's trouting it, still heading it up up there, and then down in oh wow, down in Texas, and she's powering the canoe with me and boundary water. She's awesome. That's so cool. Right on. Well. So we've covered a little bit. We kind of uh, around the uh, around the horn, I guess, on what you have. Go. Anything else you want to talk? I mean, I guess you know, as far as conservation, I want to make sure we hit on that. So talk about that again. What's going to be coming out here in the next year or so that we can expect from you? Um, that Lapland film that really ties climate change together and simple living mantras, and I would just encourage people to take a look at the Boundary Waters and and. Um, that's one of our most visited wildernesses, and there's endless places. And even that mine that was proposed, supposedly it was going to, the number said it was going to create 350 jobs. And right now they estimate that there's 10,000 to 12,000 sustainable jobs just in guides and lodging, exactly. outposts and groceries and towns that that area already supports. So here you got a, a thing we all love that, could support thousands of people and give us joy but you're gonna dig a mine and do 350 like anyway it doesn't jive i i, I know i'm that makes sense to me like hey this is wrong so i hear you i, I think it's a no brain it seems like a no-brainer you know because that industry of travel and you know like just um you know, uh, the natural resources, right? And that whole thing versus the industry. It just, it seems like, I don't know, what are the examples of these places that are, they're working really well? You know, I guess, um, you know, I, I, we're going up to the Skeena this year. So that's one of those places I think like, Hey, that's catch and release steelhead. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's one of those places that they have struggles too, but I mean, that's working great. Um, so I think there's examples around the country of these places where you don't have to have massive industry, you know, mining, whatever to take the, right. There's ways you can make money without doing that. Yeah, for sure. But like I said, like, I understand we need to do both. I'd like to see more electric cars. I'd like to drive on the big truck that was electric that I could afford and not use up this gas and feel hypocritical, with all the gear and canoes and bikes and whatnot. But even in our fly rods, there's petroleum based products. So oh, right. we got to find a middle ground. Like I'm not saying get rid of oil and, you know, we just got to find a middle ground, some balance and everything. Yep. That's right. And Patagonia, you know, I think that's one of the things that's cool. I, I found, 
you know, the more you get into this, the more you realize, right, what, what they have going. Do you talk to them a bit about with the team, about all that stuff kind of, or, or do you dig in deep to the mindset of Patagonia or is it more you're doing your thing and they're just helping you put it together? Um, it's kind of both, but it's a dream come true. Definitely the honor of my life to be a part of what those guys are doing. But there's nothing that's come out of there with our team that I haven't just cherished and agreed with. And um, doesn't mean we have all the answers, but what they stand for and, you know, how they, they pour their hearts into it. Because let's be honest, it's a business. They're selling, they're selling gear. So we're, they admit, hey, okay, we're part of the problem. As we be as we are part of the problem, let's do it in a way that tries to, you know, better things, which is that's a balancing act. Like it doesn't you could look at it. Just like catch and release fishing, people could say, Why did you even do that to the fish? Oh well, right. good point. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, exactly. But I I just have such reverence and respect for, you know, what they're trying to do when I see the companies in our industry who don't really seem to be making those efforts, even though a lot are. When the companies aren't, I just think, well, it's, there's, there's going to be people after us, and we got to you know, we got to do something for those guys ahead. So. Right, right, right. Yeah, no, I, I, no, I was just thinking as you are talking, I mean, Yvonne, so you've, have, you che- have you met the big guy yet? I have not, but we've gotten to be on Zooms together and talk and, I remember one day I came home and there was a, he wrote me a card and a handwritten card and talked to me about my films and River Horse, this is important work. Good job. Keep it up. And I thought, wow, that was, that was a really beautiful card to receive. And I kept it. I was like, I thought it was cool. Wow. That is cool. And Yvonne's not going to, you know, gush and gush and gush. He's going to have a, He's a straight shooter, so he just... Yeah, he's not going to tell you he loves you, is he? He's not that type of guy. I don't know, but he saw the film, <laughs> and he wrote that to me, and put a God, stamp on it, mailed it, and cool. I was like, that was that was cool. Wow. Wow, that so. is amazing. Yeah, I'm... I'm hopeful. I, I'm, I'm, I'm still working on it. You know, I've got a few guests that I would love to get on the podcast, you know, and uh, he's one of them because I want to really dig into this and, and hear, you know, more of his story because it is an amazing one. Um, we, we did have Craig... Um, Matthews. Yeah, we had Craig Matthews on and he, I mean, obviously I didn't even know that whole story, right? The 1% for the plan. Oh, those stuff. guys start, Yeah, that's awesome. God, it was crazy. The story, and he told about, for, I mean, the whole like... Just, I mean, old school. Talk about OG. I mean, that was like these guys were another world back in the day and, and creating these programs, right, which are just amazing. He's a good man, a good fisherman and human. And we got in a chat a few times on the phone just to talk about this, what we do and writing. And he's really, really supportive, too. He's always just reaching out with kind words about projects. And, but that's a good human, that guy. Right on. Yeah. I'm, I think I'm, uh, I think I'm doing pretty good. I need to keep uh, digging in. Like we said, more, more women on the show and, uh, and I'm going to be doing that as we go. Um, but this has been, uh, you know, for today, I mean, the guitar, I think the magazine is maybe one of my highlights. Cause I think that's amazing that you're really digging back into that deeper. Um, and you're getting to connect with some of those people, right? Some of those amazing people. What, what do you find as we kind of start to take it out of here? What, what's the, when you think about the Jackson Browns and, and all those people do, are they thinking, um, do you ever, does conservation ever come up in that venue? Is that a similar deal? It feels like fly fishing is always there, but. No, it does. Because think about this, all of these instruments that we're playing, these guitars are using tree wood and from all over the world. And some of it's protected like Brazilian rosewoods and pearls and ebony's. And these are limited resources. We could, we could do it in a way that's sustainable. And some guitar companies are, but you know, they're always they're artists. I've never met anybody that didn't want to talk about my adventures or films and no more. And yeah, this, these instruments, like to think that you take a tree that, uh, that gives us oxygen and so much more shade and food. And at some point that you could dry that, cut it into pieces and wood and you attach some wire to it and you crank out this, this music and that to me, yet another fascinating miracle of the world. That is unbelievable. The physics of sound, not just the emotion. So it doesn't, it's just one of those things. I'm like, guitars are amazing. Yeah, guitars are crazy. I know. And do you do the electric guitar ever? I got tons of them and amps and old tubes. Yeah, you got and everything. I, 
Yes. I'm nuts for that stuff. That's right. Yeah, you got guitars all over your place, don't you? I've got old Echoplex tape machines that the guitars plug into and Hendrixy fuzz faces and was Jeez. and yeah. I'm, wow. I love it. You're in it. You're as deep. Yeah, that's, I always forget about that. You're as deep into the guitars as you are the everything else. What is the, um, who is the great, I mean, there, I know there's not one, but who is your great guitarist of all time? Oh man, no, but there's so many incredible. I wouldn't, yeah. plus it's just, you can't do you it. Know, I love so many players, but I can't, I'm not going to listen to that same person every day or that same. Right. Guy. I mean, I love classical music. So it doesn't, I like just fascinated with all of it. I love good tribal music and right guitar and I, it's all good. I hear you. We're just making, I was mentioning, she's really awesome at finding stuff. And she found this, we've been following, I mentioned this before, Superman. I'm not sure if you've ever heard of him, mm-hmm. but he's this, yeah, he's Native American. It's just, he's just this guy, man. He's just so amazing, right? What he does. He doesn't drink alcohol, right? His whole life. And he's just all these really good things, but, um, he's doing this tour down in California. I think it's like, um, a whole bunch of great, you know, Native American, all sorts of cool groups. So we're, we're going to be heading down that way, I think here in July, but again, the concerts, right? The music, that's one thing with Texas. Do you find yourself looking at venues and trying to, you know, travel to those to see live music? Are you still doing that sort of thing? No, it's a good question, but that stuff all falls into place with the magazine. It's more like, you know, scenes, Things where we're at different musicians' homes having supper and there's good guys traveling through on the road. And I like that stuff, you know. But a lot of times I like to go to bed at 9 o'clock and read a book. (laughs) Right, right. (laughs) I don't need to be out some super loud crowd partying. Yeah. No, more so just making the music with other people or listening, having suppers together. So that's a really small world. I know fly fishing is even smaller, but you'd be shocked yeah. how small the music world is, everybody. Oh, Roy, really? Pretty small. No, just as far as how how connected it is. People, you know, how many players appreciate and know each other and, and cross paths. Right, right, right. This is good. I, I love the music. I mean, I'm, I, I, I'm not a good musician, but it's one of those things that just definitely keeps me going and... um and like I said, my kids, I love that they're like at this point where they have their own music and I'm starting to listen to like their stuff and, you know, and, and they're dancing. And, st- and so it's this amazing thing. But um, all right, River Horse, well, I think, you know, as always, you know, I think I feel like we could talk forever. But um, I'm going to just give a shout out because we're going to do a poetry read, a live poetry read here in a few minutes. And uh, and it's going to be you doing it like uh, the talk about this. Talk about the cloud versus set this up because uh, it's going to be a short, quick little read. But anything we want to know before people listen here in a couple minutes? Sure. So that story is called Cloudburst. And like we just talked about how water is so so miraculous and amazing. I wrote this piece. I don't mind being out in the rain. I think it's it's beautiful and funny and feels good on your body. And it can be sloppy, messy, muddy. But just like you in the Pacific Northwest, just that rainy, foggy vibes they're they're incredibly moody and beautiful and so this is a piece about how much i love being out in the rain where everybody else there's a lot of people that don't they want to run inside and i just uh, when i'm you know in the right place i have the right gear or whatever and i'm out in a canoe and i've just said yeah let's do this that captain captain dan and forrest gump in the right. big storm i'm like i love this <sighs> it's a it's some poetry about the beauty of rain so I hope you guys enjoy it. Perfect. Awesome. And are you good with the the super cold rain as well when it's 38 degrees and raining? Not always. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's the rain that's not as easy. I love the, uh, yeah, the 60, 70, 80 rain is great. But yeah, 38, which, but again, you got the Patagonia. I will say the Patagonia products, as I've been wearing more of them, um, I mean, God, they got some good stuff going. I mean, I, I've been wearing these fleece, whatever, they're the R2 stuff, R1 it is unbelievable. So not only are they doing the conservation, but they're creating great products, right? Yeah, the R2 and R1 are my, like, I'm loaded with, I'm crazy for those base layers, but embarrassingly, or whatever, I mean, I am a Texan, but I'll wear their nano puffs even when it's almost 80 out, just happily. I know. Uh, <laughs> just everybody's like, the nano puffs. You know, what are you doing? I'm like, it's kind of chilly out. Yeah. <laughs> That's but right. I'm the same 70, way. So the nano puff, that's the puffy. That's just the down. They're nice down all around. Well, that micro puff, 
unbelievable. That guy just beat that thing to death. My girlfriend has stitched mine up with this cool light we thread over and over. And because, of, like, the last time I was out with Jeff, I got eight holes in it, ripping through these woods. And <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. But we went through all these briar patches and with those long thorns. Whatever. No, it's great gear. Those guys are, and they'll stand by it for life. So that's right. And they'll fix it, right? And they'll, instead of getting a new one, they'll repair it for you. Oh, yeah. Cool. Well, love you, brother. Thanks for doing the work and having me on. Heck yeah, man. This has been awesome again. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll uh, definitely look forward to that next one. And uh, and we'll talk to you when we uh, see you. We'll send everybody out on the Instagram, riverhorse underscore Nakadate. You betcha. A storm. They say this town is about to be lit up. Empty roads. Far and wide, they bellied up and tucked themselves away in cookie-cutter neighborhood mansions. There is hand-wringing in front of flat screens alongside grave concern that the least Land Rovers will need to go to the car wash again for a fresh wax and polish. I run for it as well, straight for the water. I'm in the canoe, on a lake. I live for rain. The first tendrils of wind lilt in. Nimbus, ever dark and undulating like boiling kettle water, envelop every scrap of horizon. I feel the subtle brevity of warmth in the air swimming upward, exchange for far more bearable cool. And then, the first few untethered, unmoored drops, bigger than you might think and surreal in the way they side-slip at an angle from the skies in lieu of running straight down. Same as a river, which is simply water in the act of falling to other places. Same as us, sometimes. I forgo pulling the hood over my hair. I am much more a fan of immersing myself in it all. Native Americans have always felt rains to be signs of change. This is true. Change your stars? Nah. Mine are heady and bleeding fruit these days. More so holding hopes aloft that I can keep this ship ever steady at the helm and savor it. All of us have seen tumult and train wrecks along the way, so if and when days are sweeter than sweet, appreciate them and hold your breath. It's on the loose now. The whole sky is redlining. Buckets upon buckets pour down, and it feels so good to stand and arc casts out. So many exploding droplets are blooming to and fro that it appears as if Every damn fish in the world is rising. What else in simple nature feels this sensual and alluring? So unquestionably all-encompassing and soulful. Who is the fool that invented the roof? And why is the rest of the world under them instead of being out here? On with the headlamp. I'm going to fish on through the night and ride the hips of this storm until she leaves. And afterward, from a bedroll in the back of the truck, looking up at the stars, I'll be watching the weather, wanton with desire for endless lifetimes of rain. There we go. You can head over to wetflyswing.com slash 482 right now. 482 will get you some links. Take a look at uh, some of the stuff we talked about on uh, some of River Horse's articles, some of his stories, everything he's been writing out there. You can check it out right now. Before we get out of here, just want to remind you, check us out on Instagram at wetflyswing, and uh, and you get a chance to ask a question from an upcoming guest. Send a DM uh, message over there, and, uh, and we'll follow up with you and check in there. All right, where are we headed next? Uh, tomorrow night, we got a very big episode, one that uh, we've been excited about for a long time. We've got uh, Tim Ray Jeff on, Echo uh, founder and fly fishing and fly casting uh, champion. Tim Ray Jeff is here to tell the whole story of Echo fly fishing and, uh, and how he came to sell the company uh, as of late. So this is exciting news here. We even get a couple of uh, tips from Tim. And, uh, and we're going to be uh, doing more of this as we go. So excited to share this one uh, this week with you. You can take a quick peek to find out if, uh, if we filled that Steelhead Alley Space School 
with uh, Jeff Liskey and Rick Kustich. You can find out right now, wetflyswing.com slash steelhead school. Check it out, and we will follow up with you uh, if you enter your name and email right now. All right, I'm going to get out of here. We're going to go for it. Hope you are having a good afternoon, a good evening, or good morning, wherever in the world you are right now. And I appreciate you for stopping in and checking out the show. Thanks for listening to the Wet Fly Swing Fly Fishing Show. For notes and links from this episode, visit wetflyswing.com.